Well, hey, this is Brian from Logic Pro Hacks or FadedShadows.com. How's it going? Well, what you heard there is an actual recording from a Commodore 64 with a SID 6581. It's basically, it's a built-in programmable sound generator chip of the Commodore 64. And it was basically, it was one of the first sound chips of its kind to be included in a home computer prior to the, the quote-unquote digital sound revolution, whatever that is. And, and so I guess that's like before the MP3s or came out and we started ripping MP3s off of CDs and stuff. <laughs> Anyways, this, uh, this SID chip is really, it's, a, it's an amazing device because it, it was like the foundation of all the games that was ever produced on the Commodore 64. It had sound ranging from clicks to beeps to complex musical. I mean, it, it would just go on and on. And you, uh, pretty much every well-known game of the time was, it was known for the music from this chip. So as people grown older and we're now entering in the new digital revolution <laughs> of social and media and video and all that cool stuff, everybody is looking back to the SID chip, to the, the sound that it produced. It just, it had such a raw or interesting waveforms uh, on, on the device and it was able to produce some really cool sounds, especially if you're into chip tunes. So that being said, working in Logic, you're like, well, shoot, man, do I go on eBay and spend 150 bucks to get a Commodore 64 and then try to spend some more money to get an adapter to send MIDI to the device so that way I can record it? And there's also other units where you can put two SID devices into one Commodore. And, you know, there's a big, huge hacking community about the uh, SID device and the C64. I'm sure there's other computers out there that had ability to do this. I believe there was the Amiga and also had its own type of sound chip. I only really know about this SID device right now because that's what I'm trying to emulate here. That file that you heard there was from an Unreal Commodore 64. You can hear it. It just sounds really nice. So as I'm working and I'm trying to emulate this, I'm like, all right, how can I do this in a way to that would best get that sound. All right. And so this is what I did. The The first thing I did is I created, you know, different kinds of ESP devices. And let's go ahead and just bring up one right now. Let's click right here. All right. So I made this nice and big for you. This is at 200% so you can see it. So you don't have to squint your eyes, I believe. Yeah, that's the biggest it'll go. All right. Now on each one here, we have a, a triangle oscillator and we have a sawtooth oscillator and then we have a rectangle oscillator and then we have a sub oscillator there's actually two sub oscillators on this device you got sub one and sub two then we have a noise generator now as we go over we have our lfos right here and you got your vibrato wall whatever and you got the speed you can do your lfo and then we have filter parameters which is uh, and includes a low pass filter, the frequency knob, which is right here, and this you can rotate the cutoff frequency, and it's you know it, it's okay. And we have the resonance knob down here, and we have our eight ASR, and and we have right here, and we have chorus and overdrive. Okay, so this is not a tutorial about how to use the SP. I just wanted to just kind of lightly go over it here, but this is more tutorial about creating chip tunes. Now, in order to create a chip tune, we kind of have to know where everything is at to know how to use the ESP as far as to get a good sounding chip tune. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that all these waveforms are, are down to zero. Since the SID device had multiple waveforms, I believe the SID device had pretty much the same type of waveforms. It had a triangle, it had a square, and I believe it has salt too. too. You kind of have to wonder, was the ESP modeled after the SID? Because I tell you what, I'm, I'm getting some sounds here that are sounding really almost identical. You know, maybe some slight variations. But I'll go into that a little bit later on. Hang on here. The, the first one here is this one. So as you can see, I, I 
change this to eight. This is our octave levels. And then everything else, you know, just do as like you see here, no chorus, jack the overdrive up, take the, the attack up just a little bit, release. Everything we're doing here is we're trying to emulate the, the release. There wasn't that much of a release on the SID device from the sound. It didn't really have that much release to it. Maybe a little bit, but from the file that was played, it, it had some release because it was playing Pokeballs Canon, of course. All right, so we got all these things set, you know, and, you know, if it's like this, you could just hit the little zero right here and I'll reset that. So that's cool. All right, so we got that all done. Now, that is for my, my high synth setting. And now we go over here to the, now I got an, another high synth setting. Let's go ahead and click on this one. And I think it's pretty much the same. I, I'm just using two. All right, yeah. So I'm using two for the two different high synths because the reason why is the, Commodore 64 was not polyphonic. The original SID chip was only three voices, but you can see here I have, you know, one, two, three, four, five voices. So, eh, I'm cheating a little bit, you know, go figure. <laughs> I could probably take out this bass line and then move that and then take out these two and then and I would still have the, the elements of that song there. But anyways, as we move on, second one is, is the same. It's just, I'm just adding another one. And the mid, we have the mid here, and the mid is a little bit different. I am using the rectangle wave. And you can see I have my overdrive jacked up, resonance almost up, everything else is the same. And the mid two should be the same. No, it's not the same. I am using the triangle oscillator and Yes, I just love it. It sounds like a, a Doctor Who episode or something. Oscillator. <laughs> yes, um, I'm just in a weird mood today. Okay, so we're using the triangle for that one. Overdrive jacked up. And everything else is good to go there. All right, cool. The bass. What are we using for the bass? Bass to bass. And we are using a rectangle oscillator. <laughs> oscillator. Okay. And overdrive jacked up again. Resonance is just a little bit lower. And then you can see my cutoff frequency is almost mid. And that's it for the bass. Now, if we play the sounds, let's go ahead and just mute this guy real quick. And I just want to give you a demonstration of the first sound, which is the bass. So here we go. Okay, so that is the bass sound. Now let's go over the mid sound. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you, I have this whole thing in a track stack. So you just right click on this and create, go in here and go uh, create track stack. And I'll create this thing and then what you wanna do is you wanna create a summing track. Now on the summing track, Instead of putting a bit crusher on every single one, that's the reason why I created a track stack, I wouldn't have just put one bit crusher. And this is my settings. I'm using uh, down sampling 7x. Yeah, you could you could play with it, whatever sounds good. Uh, make sure that the resolution's 8-bit. The drive, you don't really want that much drive. Clip level, you just yank that all up. And the very important thing is click this little down arrow and change your mix to like 32. I had it all the way up to 100, and it just was just sounding like crap. So, uh, you know, you change it down to 32, and it actually, I'm fine finding that if you change your mix level to like a, you know, just kind of a little bit, it really kind of adds to it. And I really like it that way. Now, you can just play with that the mix level if you want, but I like it like that. That was the bass. That was the mid. Now, let's go to the other mid. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, you can, can hear sort of the, some of the harmonics that are coming in, and it, it just sounds really good. And again, there's no reverb, there's no nothing on this, no EQ, no nothing. It's just the ESP and, and a bit crusher. That's it. And you can see my volume levels are, are just kind of like very low. Uh, no compression, no nothing. And I just I love it. I just love the sound that this thing gives. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do the lead line right here. Very nice. Very nice.
Yay. All right, so when we put them all together, it should sound like this. So cool. This is chiptune design, guys. And you can have a lot of fun with it. Like, check this part out. You know, there's this little part right here where I did this. It just sounds awesome. Awesome. I just I just love it. And and what's great about chiptunes is when you're in a full heavy mix like dubstep or something else it really adds to it I, it's just something about it when you you put a, a down sampled 8-bit synthesized voice into all this high fidelity it kind of it feels like it evens things out a little bit so but that's just my thing so guys enjoy i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna load this project up at blend.io there'll be no charge to you you will get the full midi file and also, bonus, you'll get this MIDI file, the full Pocket Bells Canon. That's in there. And and if I get more likes, I will do more. Just the way it works. <laughs> that being said, have fun, enjoy, and stay groovy, fellas. Mm -hmm. 